Hello, I'm Kelly and welcome to my FlossTube channel, Animal Instinct. It is Sunday 14th of April 2024 and I'm back with a bit of an overdue cross-stitching update. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you're well and I hope you're enjoying your stitching. Thank you to all of my existing subscribers and welcome if you're new. I think it's been about two and a half months since my last update. Thank you to those of you who reached out just to check in on me. I am fine. Life has just been busy. Um, so I don't have a huge amount of stitching, although there's a fair amount here. Um, not my, like my usual volume, I guess. Um, since I last filmed, I moved house, which was pretty mammoth effort. Um, and work's just been very busy. I keep saying I think it's going to calm down soon, but I think I just have to accept the fact that this is this is how it's gonna be <laughs> and that's okay um, but yeah not stitching as much although I think um, I've kind of got my stitchy mojo it's coming back uh, I didn't really lose it it was more that I've been really exhausted <laughs> and you'll see um, that reflected in some of the updates I have to share um, so yeah, so I've moved up, uh, for those of you who know Adelaide, I'm now up in Mount Barker, which is really nice. And even though I'm further away from my work, it's actually quicker to get there on the freeway each morning. So really happy with the location and getting to um, know this area, which is new to me. And the cats seem pretty happy too, so that's good. I'm not sure if you'll see them today. I think they're sunbaking at the moment. So <laughs> we'll see if anyone wants to come and um, say hello. Um, so I guess I'll just jump in to share what I've been working on. I haven't even been keeping my normal records. Like I'm usually really diligent about writing down what I've worked on and how much. Um, I haven't really been doing that, but that's all right. I think I'm, I'm getting there. So first one um, to get out of the way is the saddest one. <laughs> it's Firefly, my biggest project. So this is Firefly. Uh, it's artwork by Jay Parks charted and kitted by Gecko Rouge and had a really great goal this year with Deb Wilson. We were going to stitch on it for a, month, for a week every month. Uh, she's been very good. I have not. <laughs> I managed to get it done in January but I haven't really done a whole lot since. So I'm not going to show you a before picture because this is pretty <laughs> abysmal. <laughs> um, I, th I think I was trying to count. This was just when I, I think just when I was moving house and I was really tired. Um, but so, since I last filmed, if my records are correct, I think I've put in 34 stitches. <laughs> and they are all half stitches because they're in the background. So I've done nothing. But anyway, I'm not even going to take it out of the cue snap. I've literally just carried along here. Um, I was finding I <laughs> would like I had all the good intentions of stitching and I'd sit down and I'd put a couple of stitches in and then I'd wake up and I was still holding on to the needle and thread and that happened a few nights and then I was just put it away so I will get back to this um, soon I hope <laughs> I guess I'm not going to make any promises um, but I yeah definitely need to get back to this Uh, I have had a finish, so that's nice, <laughs> surprising. Um, I was working on Christie's Corners, um, Keeping It Clean, the third in her Medieval Marginalia series. And I am very pleased to report that I have finished this one. It's very cute and funny. Uh, not ironed. I can't remember how much I'd done last time I filmed. I think maybe I'd finished the cat. Maybe I'd started on the, the swirly bits. I don't recall, but it's finished now. So it's on a piece of 40 count linen in Antiquity by number 12 Stitch Co. Uh, the other two in the series were done on something similar, but I ran out of fabric. So, um, I just went with this one because it was similar and it's worked out really nicely. I think the pattern called for a bit more swirliness over this way, but I think I decided I'd, um, it was plenty there. It was nice and balanced and I think he looks great. Uh, 
Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be any more in that series, um, but I will definitely be keeping an eye out because they've been lots of fun to stitch. Then, what's this one? I think it was about that point when I was really, really exhausted. Um, so yeah, my work has been hectic and I was, at one stage I was getting home in the evening, feeding the cats, having dinner and just going straight to bed, which is not like me at all. But I did want to keep stitching and I started asking for help trying to work out what to work on. Um, and this one was suggested because it's pretty much monochromatic and that was great. That got me going again. So this is Welcome Foolish Mortals by The Witchy Stitcher. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to find before <laughs> pictures today. I'm not sure. You may see them. You may not. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this one. So this is where I'm up to. It's coming along really nicely. Love this fabric. It's um, 28 count Flotsam and Jetsam by um, Chromatic Alchemy. It's Opal Brittany. It's got these sparkly. Uh, so I've just done the last word here and I think I put it down because I want to do the whites of the eyes um, in glow in the dark thread and I hadn't located that thread <laughs> since the move. I'm very lucky I have a dedicated craft room here in my new house but it's just piles of boxes still haven't had time to get there yet. Um, so this one is really close to being done. Uh, yeah. I was going to say maybe next time, but I'm just not going to, I'm not going to promise anything. <laughs> then, um, I needed more help deciding <laughs> what to work on. <laughs> and, um, Jo from Belushi Stitches had pulled out her, uh, Haunted Library by Lola Crow Cross Stitch. We both started that in October 2022 when we had a pile of, um, spooky themed starts and again I may have a before pick I may not <laughs> I hadn't done much at all but I actually once I got going on this I really enjoyed it and I just stuck with it and finished it it's on 32 count even weave in week T I think from Jay's X stitch it was a really nice fabric to work on um, it does have some <laughs> personalizations, shall we say? Uh, let's have a look. All the candlesticks, or yeah, all the candles are done in glow in the dark thread, although I haven't actually um, looked at it in the dark. <laughs> so, anyway, it has the glow in the dark thread, so now I have that out. I can come back to this one. Um, what else? So, the original pattern had. This is a Stephen King um, bookshelf, bookcase, I guess. Uh, and that was the clown from It. I don't really have a problem with clowns, um, but uh, someone else charted a typewriter a la Misery, and I do like Misery, so um, I made that change. What else? Um... I have no idea if I'm going to be able to show you because it's tiny, but the spider. There we go. It's a red back. And I was stitching that spider just after I found a family of red backs living in my gas meter box. <laughs> so I had to make it a red back. Um, the other weird thing that happened while I was stitching this, I was. I think I was importing um, each chapter into Pattern Keeper separately and I don't know I must have done something different Oof, it's fluff everywhere uh, because all of a sudden I had blends and I just didn't even question it I just carried on stitching it was when I was doing this this one here uh, and the blends like they kind of made sense so I thought oh that's weird okay I'll just go with it um, so this headless horseman, horseless, headless 
horseman <laughs> who is fantastic looking up at the books on the top shelf there uh, he's not supposed to have sort of gold through his coat but that's what the blend told me to do uh, so I went with it the pumpkin is kind of the shadow on the closest to him is darker and I think it's just supposed to be a darker orange but that had a blend too so it's a little odd looking but I'm just going with it and the part that alerted me to the fact there might be a problem was I think um, like the book sh the shelving which should really be consistent all the way across all of a sudden in this one there were blends and some of them were really obvious and I have left a couple of stitches see just um, on the other side of the pumpkin there's a couple of light stitches that's one of the blends and I just decided just to leave it in um, so I don't know what was going on Deb suggested the pattern was haunted <laughs> very possible so with the blends one of the colors was actually the correct color and I don't know why I just randomly added an extra color from within um, the project <laughs> so anyway it's fine it's fine um, but I am stoked to have finished that I really didn't think I would uh, yeah brilliant it's amazing how much detail she can get into such a small like area of stitching it's quite yeah it's a, it's a skill um so next up i worked on another spooky themed start from last year um so again i started with this with joe from belushi stitches and this is having a mental blank <laughs> Book of Shadows by Living on a Shadow. No, Book of Shadows by Living on a Rainbow. <laughs> That's right. Um, this came out as a mystery stitch along and it's well and truly finished now. And you stitch the, like, it, you basically turn it into a little book when it's done. So that looks challenging, but also fun. Um, again, I might have a before picture. I might not, <laughs> but this is where I'm up to. So aside from the back stitch, um, oh, and the the hinges on the door, <laughs> that, that's the back cover, and that's done. I'm just missing the. Um, it's like a dark grey, crinic. The hinges. Um, oh, and I haven't done the eyes. So this green. <laughs> They're, they're snakes and they're supposed to have two little French knots each um, and you can't see them very well like you can sort of see it on the camera but in real life it's I think I mentioned this when I first worked on it I wasn't sure so I double checked the spool of crinic I had was correct it's labeled correctly um, but Jo showed me her spool and hers is a totally different green it's much lighter and it's definitely the same green that's used in the model stitch like on the pattern so I'm not sure if maybe I don't know if it's a dye lot issue I don't think it is I think it I think that my spool has been incorrectly labeled um, I'm just going with it it's fine <laughs> so this part's on 18 count Ada the spine of the book will be here and then the front cover will be here and then you stitch the pages on different um, different fabric so looking forward to getting to the stage where I can fully finish that one, but probably a little way off. Um, then, <laughs> so my overall plan for this year was no unplanned new starts. Uh, and I haven't had any really unplanned new starts. I hadn't had any new starts until yesterday. I totally fell for Lola Crow's newest stitch long, um, the Deadly Aquarium. Uh, I'll get to that in just a second. Um, actually, yeah, I'll get to that in just a second, but I'd already decided I was going to start that. Um, 
but it hadn't quite been released yet. So in the meantime, I was like, oh, I feel like working on some full coverage maybe. Um, and this one came and sprung to mind, I think, because it kind of fits with the, the aquatic theme. Um, so I pulled out my mini Contessa and Squid by Omar Ryan from Heaven and Earth Designs. I think he's no longer with them anymore. Um, and so again, I may or may not have before <laughs> pictures, but what I, oh, this is where I'm up to. Anyway, this is where I'm up to. So it's on 28 count, one over one full cross. And I started in her face just to make sure I was happy with the detail because it's a mini and I am. It's not, it's not quite finished, that's why it's still a bit patchy. Um, but I prefer to start in the top left. So I'd worked my way up. I think I'd worked my way up to about here. Um, and so I've pretty much put in this, it was a lot of 310. Um, and now I'm on to, I think, 3371. <laughs> so loads of dark stitching. Um, here it is. And I think it's going to look amazing. I don't have many full coverage pieces on 28 count. And I remember when I started working on this, um, I really noticed the difference between 28 and 25, which is what I sort of got more projects on. And actually when I first started it, I was ended up using a magnifier because it was, I could see the holes, but it just made it easier. Uh, this time I haven't had a problem, no magnifier required, <laughs> but the coverage with the dark colors is excellent. Yeah. So that is my Contessa and Squid. I have had my first start for the year which is pretty good going. Um, I don't want to have unplanned new starts this year because uh, it gets a bit out of control. So I'm not sure if you can hear that. It's cat playtime apparently. <laughs> um, anyway, this, I will totally admit this wasn't a planned <laughs> new start. However, I'm justifying it because if I'd known what the theme was going to be, um, I definitely would have had it on the list to start for sure. Um, Lola Crow's um, Deadly Aquarium and I love all things aquatic, so definitely for me. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the frame came out yesterday and there's six weeks until the actual stitch along, like the creatures start coming out. I started the Haunted Library later, um, so that wasn't part of that stitch along. And I did start Greenhouse of Oddities uh, when it started and quickly fell behind. <laughs> so I probably won't keep up with this one, um, but I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, I decided I wanted to use some fabric from my stash. And I found this piece um, of cashew, so 28 count linen. And I've had this in my stash for ages. So it's blue with like splotches of purple. I don't love cashew linen. It's, and this is very like scratchy and lots of slub, slubs in it. Um, but I think, I think it'll work. I want to use it up for my stash. Um, it's, did I say what it was? It's Jazz by Picture This Plus. So I'm not sure if they still do this kind of labeling. Um, but I bought this from a stitchy LNS in Texas on my last overseas holiday in 2018. So. Um, it's been far too long since I've had a good holiday and I'm looking to rectify that. So very exciting. Um, but it's great to be able to use up some old stash. And yesterday was the first Saturday in, I reckon, all year that I haven't had to go out and do something. <laughs> and I actually feel like I'm having a real weekend. It's amazing. Um, so I got a really great start on this. 
This is my start. So I've started basically stitched whatever I could fit in like in the Q-snap frame that I could see. Um, so it's the top left, it's like the first page of the pattern. Um, I like out the ornate stuff here at the top and there's the little sign. And I'm not sure how far down it comes. I think it might come maybe to here-ish. And then there's a ah, <laughs> there's a wider section in the middle of this, and then that's kind of repeated again on the far left. So there we go. I think that fabric will work nicely. So I'm going to keep that out and just keep on working on it later this afternoon. That's all the stitching I've done in the last few months. Um, I have, I just have a little bit of haul. I haven't really been buying much at all, but I had to go to Spotlight to get some DMC and they had these kits out for $5 each. And so I picked a couple up. I have no idea when I'll get to these or how, <laughs> if I can actually do them, they look, Maybe complicated, I don't know, but it's needle felting, which I haven't done before. And that's it. I got Bluebell. It does say fabrics pre-printed and easy to follow, so <laughs> we'll see. I feel like it could end up like one of those nailed it kind of situations. And the other one is Galaxy. I haven't opened them, but that's what you get. That's what's scaring me, like all the fluffy bits. <laughs> it's a really scary looking needles actually. And this one's got beads as well. So, has anyone tried needle felting? Is it hard? <laughs> um, and lucky last, I am planning, so what are we, mid-April, end of, End of the month, I am going to the Vic Stitches retreat again in Shepparton, Victoria. So I went last year, was it the year before as well? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, anyway, really looking forward to having um, a nice long weekend away with Stitchy friends. Let me know if you're coming um, and I look forward to catching up with everyone who um, I saw last year and I think a few new faces coming along this year too. So really looking forward to that. I think, I'm not sure when I'll film again. I might wait till the end of May and then get back into my normal monthly routine. That's probably how it will go, <laughs> but you never know. I might come back before then, we'll, we'll just see. Um, thank you again for those of you who reached out and just checked in on me. And um, yeah, until we meet again, happy stitching. See ya.